hello and welcome. Uh, we're a little off from the timer, but that's all right. Welcome to the Beacon Space BBTV broadcast. I'm your host, uh, Lichmaster98, our game master as well. And as always, joining me today is our co-anchor, Lucas Kalbrek from an undisclosed location you're being uh, remoted into the today's um, broadcast, I believe, right? Yep, happy to be here with you, Lichmaster. Great, great. Uh, let's go ahead and kick things off then. If you're new here, welcome. This is uh, Beacon Space it, in our monthly lore stream where we go over some of the cool uh, objects, artwork, documents, videos, whatever multimedia presentations have been created by the factions of this game. So the game, if you're not familiar, is played on a monthly basis at the second stream the, that we run on a, a regular, on a regular, on the regular. There we go. Words are hard. And um, if you're not aware of what it is, it's a based off of the Stars Without Numbers faction turn system, which is a, a initially a GM game, but we transformed it into a multiplayer game being run on the uh, Discord server. If you're interested in joining, you want to find out more about it, you can go ahead and join, and there's plenty of welcoming folks there who will help you out. Uh, we're even putting together a, a new folks document now with a collection of members from the community to help anyone who's who's new get up to get up to speed. But I think that takes care of all of our all of my introductions. Do you have anything to uh, to introduce with, Cal? Uh, all I have to introduce is everybody to another law stream. That sounds great. Well, with that, let's go ahead and kick off then our uh, our first faction announcement then. How about that? I believe our first submission comes from the ever-watchful Starlit Court. That is, they have provided us a, a video presentation to uh, present with, so I'll go ahead and roll that now along with... Uh, making sure that you can't uh, hear us talking over the video. So here we go. See he, home of the Starlet Court and land of technological and ecological wonder. Now, thanks to the efforts of our people and a sizable investment in air scrubbing technologies, we can open this place, our home, to you. Explore the many pubs and vibrant culture of Kaplan. Boat down the Silver Road and visit the many vineyards of scenic Ward 1. Wander through the hills and fields of Pastoral Ward 2. Fish and swim in the lakes of Nanimin in Ward 3. Crack a cold one with your armed knight escort as you trek the black forests of Ward 4. Wards 5 and 6 are off limits to all outside visitation. Unauthorized access to Wards 5 and 6 will result in immediate arrest and ejection from Starlet Court held territories. And marvel at the churning sea, the massive artificial ocean that makes up Ward 7. See he, an honorable destination. Okay, how was that? Oh, good, excellent, excellent. Uh, something you have to add to the most. to the next broadcast. Well, all right. If it's for the court. By oath and honor, we of the court are bound to bring you this message with the greatest of haste. The Starlet Court has been entrusted with the chair of the TELUS Terra Group Initiative. Though we thought our involvement in the initiative was a mere formality, we are grateful for this honor and seek to use its power forthright. The decisions of the initiative have been, up until now, made behind closed doors and the veils of anonymity. We of the court seek to change this practice and move to make both the subject of the vote and the act of voting public information. Remember, to skulk in the shadows is to wallow in shame, while standing proud in transparency brings honor and virtue. We thank the Starlet Court for their wonderfully produced video. And to go along with that breaking news at the end of the presentation, I believe our reporters stationed around TELUS on an orbit on the TELUS Terror Group's um, functioning body have acquired an official document uh, relaying that information. 
We'll be displaying yes, it on the screen uh, for you now. While it might not have been intended to be an open letter, it has become such in the last centuries. Politics around the uh, TELAS Terror Group initiative have always been uh, behind the scenes. We've had investigative reports. We've had uh, leaks and whistleblowers. And this is one of the first times a very public stance has been made by one of the council members uh, calling for transparency, not something we often see around the shadowy TTGI. What with the uh, the incident last month with uh, with the ruins and the uh, the sadly now deceased member of the exploratory team. Uh, th this is uh, unprecedented in the history of the council, and it's going to be interesting to see how it is dealt with moving forward. Absolutely. Do we want to read out this document for fine viewers at home? Absolutely. It is uh, a letter from the Starlet Court. It is addressed as a urgent missive to the TTGI Council. It says, esteemed members of the TELAS Terror Group Initiative, I, shield bearer Magravina Albury, emissary and herald of the Starlet Court to this eminence congregation, must announce that we of the Starlet Court are most displeased with the way this organization has been run thus far. Still quoting shield bearer Margrave Albury, when we joined the initiative, we thought that this would be a ground for unification and harmony. Thus far, it has been nothing but a shadow game of politics and intrigue. Most of us left in a position of ignorance and ignored by our peers when decisions were to be taken. This will not stand. It is now the court's duty to hold the chair, and I have been left dumbstruck that no one so far had the courage and the valour to announce that they were holding the chair. What does this show to our peoples? That their leaders act in the darkness of the night? That we are not exemplars, not worthy of being at the forefront of our society because we espouse and incarnate the values we hold dear? Strong words from the shield bearer. As long as the initiative has been administered so far, we have only been made aware of the bills we were to vote on and what the eventual results were when said results could be provided. No accountability or reasoning has been provided from any involved party, and that is simply not right. What's more, none of us have felt that transparency and accountability were in the best interest of all of us, members of the board. No more should this be. The Starlet Court and I, meaning shield bearer Margravine Albury, hereby submit this simple but capital act to remedy the current situation. The Transparency Act surmises that every vote from now on should be conducted openly, with every member of the board announcing their vote instead of sending a missive to the current holder of the chair. We of the Starlet Court believe that we cannot act in unison if we do not voice and debate our disagreements. Leadership is not a birthright. It is an acquired privilege that each leader must always strive to maintain. Deceit leads nowhere but to needless conflicts. Esteemed colleagues, we are at the head of this initiative in order to see a world rise from its ancient ashes. To rebuild a sector brought low by the glitch, enlightened and virtuous decisions will only arise from our willingness to act in good faith with one another. If conflicts must arise from this decision, so be it. The virtuous shall prevail in the end, as they always do. May the initiative's path always starlit be. End quote. As I was saying before, a call for accountability and transparency, which is going to have varied reactions and already has had varied reactions from people on the board from what the reporters have been telling us. Yes, it's quite. I've been uh, communicating with my sources. They've been sending uh, laser wire communications quite quite frequently back to, uh, back to me here at the control booth, and I'm hearing several aides of the council are concerned about what this may mean in the future and uh, how their workload may potentially increase. But uh, all are anxious to see the, the final results of this uh, act put forward by the Starlet Court. The Beacon Broadcast TV, who is completely politically neutral, must announce that we always support every decision made by the Talas Terror Group Initiative, and the Starlet Court should be very careful when dealing with the Talas Terror Group Initiative. This brought to you by the Politically Neutral Beacon Broadcast Organization, funded by the TELUS Terror Group Initiative. Glad we got the uh, disclaimers from management out of the way. With that out of 
out of the way. Uh, I believe we can move on to our next faction's um, presentation for the day. Let's just, uh, well, let's, we'll just, we'll just kill the scroll because it's being a little too slow in that document. And we'll bring up a faction logo that has been reintroduced to the sector and uh, updated by Larkspur Combine. Updated style guidelines. Make sure all the PR teams have the fresh information and make sure that your ship's iconography interpreter is ready to detect the new Larkspur symbols. Right, yes, you can find this updated insignia of the Larkspur Combine emblazoned on many exports from the planet Moss, including shipments of lead saturated ores, farming and mining machinery, and specialty weaponry. The floral pattern in the center is, of course, a reference to the beautiful but poisonous Larkspur flower. The intersecting geometry of the star and pentagon, highlighted in a striking green light, calls to mind the elaborate rituals and procedures used by the Larkspur family and their associates to channel the bleed. And the stained glass, glass aesthetic pays homage to the religious traditions and heritage of the Combine. This logo is certainly a mark of quality. Do not use any bleed technology that does not feature prominently this new flower logo, because you may be using knockoff bleed technology, which we all know what can happen there. Don't remind me of the last incident we had on station. With that, we thank the Larkspur Combine and the wonderful artists. Um, I believe, in fact, I have a name. Let me find it of the the final artist. It was a collaboration, I know, by the faction, but I believe this this final version has been put together by Arisha Kithi, uh, the constellation. Um, if you uh, want to thank them for their wonderful contribution and work. With that, I believe we wrap up Larkspur Combine submission. Thank you very much, and we move on next to a. I believe the control room is informing we we have an another one of our remote reports in the field from Chaz Gusto Prime. Uh, let's uh, throw it away to them and see what update they have for us. Take it away, Chaz. Am I hearing? I'm, I'm seeing chat tell me there's nothing uh, playing on stream. Let me see what's up with that. Okay. Well, I believe I believe we have uh, yes, quite some technical difficulties from hearing a reporter from Chaz in the field. Let's see if we can resolve this. Uh, in a audio it's going out. Monitor I'm calling Gremlin Pest Control as we speak. <laughs> Quite, huh? Let's. <laughs> Now. Hello, Beacon Space. This is your favorite reporter, Chaz Gusto Prime, here with the latest. And this report yeah. has me positively dizzy with all the excitement in recent days. Of course, all details were verified by insider sources over the last few weeks as events unfolded. First is a reminder that if you have any information to help authorities locate former BBTV anchor Al Kalbrick, that information would be greatly appreciated at this time and is subject to some reward money. 
A recent large theft of broadcast equipment from the BBTV is suspected to be related at this time. Now for the heart-pounding continuation of the TELUS incident. We end our last report with Black Sight XT-09 under sustained assault assault by Locust Reaper Swarms, weapons from the Vein Strike Fleet designation Rites of Spring in high orbit above TELUS. Per news reports, it seems like the surviving Black Sight operatives have went into hiding as a supply delivering company in the wake of the attack. Under this guise, they infiltrated the recently discovered TELUS ruins and attempted to smuggle out artifacts from within, but were discovered by the Vane missionaries and subsequently pursued by Bioshell Division Gospel at the behest of Bishop Arbor. The alleged Amalheart operators of Black Sight XT-09 were unprepared for the assault, but fought valiantly to the end by all accounts we have received. When the dust settled, Bishop Arbord's missionary agents had secured the site and the artifacts therein with suspected threats cleared. The Children of the Vein have now redoubled their efforts to deploy resources and personnel to tell us in their stated goal of reinforcing the great works of the Telus Terra Group Initiative. Let us all hope that they make good on their promise and do not do to tell us what they did to the black site. In other news, the Assembled Commonwealth recently assisted the Vane in a mass infrastructure transfer effort on TELUS. The New Eden Gene Bank, which had originally operated and been headquartered on Magalka in the Ledgero system, was moved to help fund and support the Vane's efforts to assist the TELUS Terror Group initiative. This bank not only provides sector-wide financial services, but also doubles as a genetic vault housing the gene of untold billions of species and individuals within. The bank is headed by Seed App Golden Particular, matriarch of the Vein of Paradise, one of the so- many so-called veins that make up the children of the vein as a whole. Uh, within the bank's financial backings and resources, Vein's clients all across the TELUS all across TELUS, have started treating patients at an impressive rate, having attracted thousands of patients throughout the sector to TELUS over the past month. Maybe I should visit and see one of the processes in person. Elsewhere in TELUS, in a surprise announcement, the Ascent and the Children of the Vein have started a joint research operation to explore the recently unearthed ruins there. In an earlier press statement, the new Ascent Lorite, Spirit on Valatos, was quoted as saying, In order to move forwards in life, we sometimes have to examine the past. Today, we embark on a new endeavor in partnership with the children in the vein. I'm delighted to share that we are both keen and hungry to uncover more, together. In related news, an internal memo was shared with us by one of our most trusted sources with the following quote. Quote, Rediscovering old technology can put a target on your back, especially this type of tech. Also, happy to announce that Acolyte Opal, Acolyte Kale, and Gene Priest Horkon of the Vein of the Breath Below have been promoted to lead on the Joint Perder Exploration Tax Force, alongside Keepers Roku, Sibilia, Marea from The Ascent. What is this Perder, and is it a good thing? Hope we'll find out soon. In some interstellar news from across the sector, some of our Moss viewers would have noticed the light show in the night sky in recent days. Unfortunately, it was not the filming of the new Sky Battle 7, The Squid's Return, coming out later next year, but was in fact the sudden arrival of the Aguamala Syndicate's fleets La Lanza and La Casa de Fieras. With their arrival, they wasted no time attacking Children of the Vane's Arc Beast Deliverance, which was in orbit. Despite their heavy firepower, Deliverance proved to be a much more resilient and nimble target than expected, and coupled with its organic defense bubble, successfully evaded the Syndicate's hunters unscathed. According to one homesteader, locally known as Babushka, quote, Moi dobre nebresa, the light show was fantastic nipple, but just behind the Battle of 41, but boyza moi kakoye, vreme. Beat out the crash of 78 Deshi. <sighs> Got to see this one. End quote. What a lovely vignette from our local viewers. So, 
What do you think, viewers? Will Deliverance be able to keep up the dance, or will it fall prey to the Syndicate's lodges in the skies of Moss? And that concludes our Sector Report, ending us off with so many questions and too few answers, as always. Tune in next time for the latest information with amazing accuracy. This is Chaz Gusto Prime, blipping out. Thank you, Chaz, for that report from the field. Um, Lupus Colbrick, you don't care to tell me what location you're uh, beaming into today's broadcast from, do you? Uh, that cannot be revealed, and also I think Chaz is coming for my job, so... Perhaps you should be on the lookout. I have my resume prepared. I understand <laughs> if you want to fire me right now. Not quite necessary. We'll have to just wait and see what the perhaps upper management uh, thinks. Understood. Up next, I believe we have a presentation, uh, or at least an update, from the Ogomala Syndicate. Let's take a look at their PowerPoint here. So I've uh, got an internal mem memorandum to members of the affiliated patrons of the Ogomala Syndicate from the assembled leaders of the Syndicate on the quarter report of the Planetary Assets Acquisitions. All right, let's get through this. From... Uh, please note our stationery this quarter is provided by the Syndicate-sponsored Guillaume Board of Tourism in accordance with our recent integration of GOM into the Syndicate's holdings. Only established a short time ago, forward operating base Delos has already proved a valuable foothold on the planet, hosting Syndicate representatives while negotiations were underway with legislative representatives from the GOMES people. These negotiations have proved fruitful, and we are pleased to announce that the Syndicate has been granted stewardship of GOM. As such, resource acquisition terms have been diverted to GOM in order to expediently survey the planet. Already early reports gathered with assistance of the GOMES people show that the world is home to an abundance of material resor of mineral resources, excuse me, which will allow for the expansion of assembly and developed facilities on Nueva Comatac over the next several quarters. In addition, Falcons have identified a number of fauna which have seen promising candidates for both commodity and developmental hunts. The native population of GOM have also presented an eager willingness to engage with the Syndicate's representatives, and a number of headhunters have been dispatched to locate new candidates for Syndicate membership, in accordance with the Syndicate's standard recruitment procedures. For further information on the Syndicate operations, or to recommend other planetary assets for consideration by our Acquisitions Department, please contact your local Syndicate representative. We uh, thank the leaders of the Syndicate for providing this lovely update uh, to their members, and uh, also to our correspondents for being able to get it to us. The Aquamala Syndicate uh, broadcasting or public relations team are always on time and quick to provide us with information, and I suspect that the timing of their submissions has been uh, linking up with news reports they would rather not be on screen. I probably do... shouldn't have said this out loud. Well, they do have a way of providing convenient alternative messaging, uh, perhaps when PR disasters might strike, but it's uh, such as the way PR goes, isn't it? And our media correspondents work to bring us all the most accurate news they can acquire. I think we can thank the Ogomolo Syndicate for their submission, their wonderful document, and of course the uh, the artistry behind it is quite amazing. And I believe with that we can move on to our next faction update, including one from the Commonwealth, uh, the assembled Commonwealth. Let's see what their, I believe we're We've told that their Aetharch, I believe one of the leaders, uh, has made a surprise visit. Let's see what our, our reporters on the field um, have on Earth for us. We do love their limes. They do, in fact. And it looks like we have an official m uh, missive here about a state visit to Mankira Niti. Perhaps you can uh, key us in on this information. Yep. 
It has been reported that today, Aethark Tiber I left the Aster system for a state visit to the nearby Divine Collective of Mankira, marking his first trip outside of Idarast's orbit in over a decade. The Aethark left the planet in the early morning on board the yacht, the yacht CNV Alexander II, escorted by a detachment of vessels from the White Fleet, including the battleship CNV Hyperion. Other than by his staff, the Aethark was also accompanied by Aethering Senwen. While it is not unusual for the Aethering to be included in state functions, her presence in such an important visit once again gives credit to the rumor that the Aethering's education is being accelerated in view of a possible abdication of the current monarch. Mankiraniti has been a long-standing trading partner for the Commonwealth, with guilds and other Idari businesses steadily increasing their presence in the system over the past few years. Though this expansion has been heavily limited by the Mankiran authorities, in recent months, unrest and protests have erupted, calling for a relaxation of restrictions, and many are clamoring for Mankiraniti to finally accept its place among the interstellar community. Calls to lift the government's tariffs on a wide range of goods and services and open up Mankiran society seem to have gained traction within the upper echelon of the Divine Collective. And the Aethark state visit is seen by many as the first practical sign of acceptance to open up Mankira. And now some information about the Divine Collective. Perhaps you can share that with us. Absolutely. The Divine Collective is built around a ritual and the state visit will be no exception. Upon arrival, the Aethark and his staff will take place in a cleansing ritual, removing all contamination before being allowed entry into the First Haven. The Aethark will then undergo a ritual to introduce him to the two deities of the Divine Collective, She Who Judges and She Who Pleads, followed by several hours of meditation before meeting the matriarch in her private residence. The schedule for the remainder of the state visit has remained a closely guarded secret, with only the Aethark staff being informed of the details, were assured for operational security. It has not yet been revealed what the two leaders plan to discuss, but the state visit was initiated by the Divine Collective, so speculation has included a deepening of the relationship between the Commonwealth and the Theocracy, which would be a boon to trade and likely calm internal tension on Mankaraniti. It's too soon to tell what will come from this historic event. However, with the Commonwealth set upon expanding its influence, this meeting is likely to be the only the first step in a long journey for both Iderast and the Divine Collective. Thank Before you we... for that official release from the state visit to Mankiraniti by the Aethark and the Ethering. It is significant to see both high presence uh, individuals in one location, especially on a on a state visit away from from Iderast. Absolutely. Absolutely. The uh significance of this moment cannot be understated for the community at large in the sector. We will be trying to acquire more information about this rumored possible abdication. Interesting that the Commonwealth themselves speculating as to this possibility. It is strange that an official missive mentions this uh, not yet quite official line, but perhaps we'll see um, what that brings in the near future. I'll reach out to my contacts. That sounds wonderful. With that, I believe we can thank the Assembled Commonwealth for their wonderful document. Um, I assume, as with most of the documents we've shared on screen today, they will be available in the Discord uh, in either the propaganda or the media share locations if you want to take a deeper look at any of these um, documentations to see and read the text for yourself and then just appreciate the the wonderful letterhead that has been created by so many of these individuals. We do have, are you hearing the same thing I am from, from the control room? We were being told that there's an emergency media broadcast coming out of Children in the Vein on, out of their, their headquarters. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yep, I'm also being advised that I will have to move from this location in 20 minutes due to severe threat to my life. Quite, quite. Let's uh, let's check up on the Children of the Veins broadcast update. This is being 
beam linked directly in from, from their headquarters, where we're told, on Heliocytus. It is easy to despair in the shadow of a storm, as darkness blots out the heavens above and the skies unleash the grim and torrential waves upon the terra firma below. It becomes easy to wish for a warm sun on your skin and dry earth at your feet. But every rain serves a purpose. It nourishes the land, gives life to the parched, offers salvation from drought, and then it ends. By the grace of God, the children of the vein formally declares an immediate cessation of all hostilities toward the Amalheart Institute. Be blessed with spring. Interesting. So this is the first we're hearing about this cessation of hostilities. This will be interesting to see for the sector at large, don't you think, Kalbrecht? As my grandfather says, war is good for business, but peace is good for business. And the Amalha Institute and the Children of the Vein will surely have a renewed increase in technological progress now that they're no longer at odds. Quite. Perhaps they'll be able to achieve greater uh, accomplishments through uh, investiture of technology rather than perhaps one through combat. As that decidedly creepy broadcast said, there is salvation from drought. So uh, perhaps we will drink deep of the gene editing waters. Perhaps we shall. Well, I think we can thank Children of the Vein for their uh, last minute broadcast here regarding the cessation of hostilities as we look forward to uh, seeing what the future of our sector holds. Uh, once again, we'd like to thank everyone who produced artwork or um, audio clips or any form of multimedia presentation in today's stream. Uh, it wouldn't be possible without all of the wonderful work that happens uh, from all of you creative people every month. Yeah, thank you all very much for your submissions and caring about the universe that we've all built together. Absolutely. All right, I believe that's all we have uh, this month from us. There's no no GM prepared lore presentations as we spent most of our Montium lore energies on the um, creation of the, the prompts that were handed to both Ascent and Children of the Vein for their exploration of Telus. Uh, perhaps you'll see some future ideas from us uh, to riff off of if you would like and continue to uh, make fun of us on stream uh, as we continue this process. <laughs> I would like to thank the Telus Terror Group Early Warning Alert System for alerting me to the team of crack assassins that will be arriving in, uh, oh, 12 and a half minutes, it now says. Well, perhaps I should uh, let you evacuate to a secure location uh, as we end today's broadcast. Thanks, everyone, for participating and uh, coming out to see the stream. And uh, we'll have the VOD version of this up on YouTube. Uh, so if you missed anything, you'll be able to check it out uh, later. Oh, thank you very much. I think it was seconds. Well, he's gone. And with that, I'll sign you off. Thanks for everyone for joining, and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good evening. <laughs>